Hello everybody, I am Shimming Shadow and today we're back for um, non-Valentine's background despite all the hearts and things um, continuing on our Valentine's lovely visual novel Highway Blossoms and um, yeah <laughs> the last episode was yeah that <laughs> but I didn't want it to end too sadly for post you know Valentine's Day <laughs> but so yeah this episode gets a bit sad but it does um it does get better don't worry <laughs> this is a romance novel that is a happy ending <laughs> it starts off the same as always the same static the same first note everything but soon the audio starts to slip like someone is sliding on the tape the music jarbles into something distorted and ugly Speeding up, slowing down, and going backwards all at once. I frantically push the eject button over and over, but it's too late. The deck spits out the tape, a string of tattered ribbon tangled around it. Marina is too captivated by something outside to notice what happened, but I feel all of it. Tears start to swell up deep inside me, but it just morphs into fury. Check it out! That mountain still has snow! God damn it! Shut up! As if the universe were conspiring against me, a deafening explosion blasts in front of us. Tremors shake the motorhome. We bounce into our seats as I grip the wheel and pound on the brakes, swerving out of traffic. Our hearts almost collide. Gasping for air, Marina turns to me for answers. Damn it! Not now! I tear off my seatbelt and rush outside. Smoke rises from the engine, tearing into my lungs as I open the hood. And the background music starts, thankfully. <laughs> ah, shit! There's the pretty windmills. Marina runs to my side, waving away the smoke. Her jaw drops. Oh my god, what happened? What do you think happened? The engine blew! Punt the bumper. Leaves a small dent like my numb foot is made of steel. What? But how? How the hell would I know? She flinches back, and I just put on a hopeful smile. We have some tools, maybe we can fix it. Laughing, I lean in and scoff in her face. Oh, you know how to fix the engine, Marina? No, but I thought maybe you could. Do I look like a mechanic to you? Marina wraps herself in the security of her arms and looks at the windmills, their wings casting thick, brief shadows over us. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> I just thought... <laughs> you thought? The last time you thought, you ended up broken down on the side of the road! So maybe it would be better for the both of us if you continued not to think! She can hardly look at me. Her voice slows to a fragile whisper, crackling as she speaks. I just wanted to help. Unless you can magically pull a phone out of your ass and call a tow truck, then you can't. And even if you could, you would probably just let it get stolen. No response. You want to make yourself useful? Go back into the RV. Rena keeps her eyes to the ground. Without saying another word, she slinks back to her seat. I sigh and space myself out in front of the motorhome, wave my hands back and forth as cars speed by, ignoring my signal. Even I can't follow my own stupid advice. Yeah, all right. I understand. Thanks. Untangling the cord, I set the phone down and sit on the bed and sigh into my hands. Hotel sheets are surprisingly soft. A hell of a lot softer than the stiff rags I've been sleeping on lately. Downtown Palm Springs, a five-star hotel. We were lucky they had a vacancy, let alone checked us in this late. Of course, a negative gold can go a long way in the art of persuasion. I would have sprung for a cheap motel, but every place has no vacancy signs lit up, and, well, I... Guess I just wanted to pamper Marina one last time. 
last time. Especially after earlier. Especially before what I'm about to do. The bathroom door creaks open. Rena walks onto the carpet, her hair still damp and stringy. Noticing me, she stares down, avoiding eye contact. Starting a <laughs> not too happy melody. I do the same, letting the silence overtake the room until one of us is forced to say something. How was the shower? It was nice. Got hot really fast. What a time. The room goes silent again. Neither of us can look at the other, but we're both stuck. Trapped into where one of us can get past the awkwardness. Marina is the first to look up. Will the motorhome be okay? Uh, yeah. They said the engine overheated. Should be able to fix it. That's good. The first words were said to each other in hours. Even after I flagged down the car and got someone to call us a tow truck, we just sat in a bearable silence the entire ride over. But it was the silence that gave me time to reflect on how wrong I was. How wrong I have been. And what it is I really need to do. I'm sorry about yelling at you earlier. I was angry. Yeah, at myself. I shouldn't have taken that out on you. I was being annoying. I should have stopped talking when you asked me to. No! You've never done anything wrong. It was always me. Always. Don't be so dramatic. She flails her arm over her forehead and falls dead onto my shoulder. Everyone gets mad sometimes. Don't beat yourself up over it. I shake my head and pull away. Oh, sad face. It's not about getting mad. It's that I didn't live up to my end of the bargain. Again. Amber? I look at the curtains and sigh. We're not missing anything, just an ugly view of the parking lot. I just got off the phone. I bought a bus ticket home for you. One way. Uh huh? The cab should be here 10.30 tomorrow morning to take you to the station. Rena shakes out a stilted laugh. She's not smiling, though. You're, you're just teasing me again, right? I ignore her and continue. You can call your parents with the phone. I don't mind paying the extra charge. You're serious? Bug-eyed, Marina freezes, the truth slowly setting in. What about the festival? The treasure? She snaps back, desperate to find some kind of rope to pull me back in. You can keep it. All of it. I don't care. I'll go to the festival, go home, and get a job. I'll just pay everything off that way. Right. How I should have been to begin with, and the trip was about Gramps and not me. I don't care how long it takes. I owe him and Marina that much. Marina sniffles. The tears are starting to leak out, but she braces herself, trying to remain strong. Then what about us? What about it? I feel like I just ripped my heart in half. For Marina, it looks like her entire world has been nuked. Makes me want to hug her, to hush her, and tell her over and over that I didn't mean it. That she can always count on me, but I can't. Why? It doesn't matter. Tell me! I said no! Why not? Because you wouldn't understand. Look, you'll be fine. Just keep your- Stop treating me like a f***ing child! Angry tears streak down her face. 
through heavy breathing, she recoils, shocked by her own words. I, I didn't mean... She steps closer and strokes my cheek, turning my face to hers as I try to hide my watery eyes. It's really good art. Makes me want to cry just looking at it. Amber, please, don't do this. I love you. Please stop. Don't make this harder. How can I understand if you don't tell me? She barely manages to speak. Her tears now in free fall as she chokes out the words. Let me help. I squeeze my hand into a fist, tripping as I back away to the door. I'm sorry. Amber. Her knees buckle and she crumples to the ground, bawling as she squeaks out another plea. Stop! I'm sorry. I throw open the door and sprint down the hallway, leaving Marina sobbing as I wipe away tears of my own. I'm sorry! The crowd moves on. I don't bother raising my head, allowing myself to be dragged along wherever they're going. My hand is dug deep within my pocket, playing around with a cassette and its string of tattered ribbon. The hotel is far in the distance now, lit up against the darkening sky. Rena's probably still up there crying. I let go of the tape and force myself to keep walking through the clammy misters attached to shops and bars. It's not my business, it's what's best for her. But it hurts. Everything hurts. I expect Marina to come skip after me and lean on my shoulder so we can explore the town. Ready yet, chew me out and punch me until I feel like I can justify what I've done. I know that's not gonna happen. She's too sweet for that. She's Marina. I don't want anything to ever change now. Me, especially. I can't be trusted with something that precious and not screw it up. Not again. A streaky laugh shatters my trance. Whipping round, I find a small building squished between a thrift store and a pawn shop. Pull off to the side and peek in. Do nothing more than to forget about everything. Smaller than the RV, the entire middle dedicated to four mismatched bars set up in a square, surrounded by cheesy island decor and streamers hanging from the ceiling. And we're all a legion of girls. Tall girls, girly girls, redheads, blondes or brunettes, all crowned inside and chatting each other up in a festival of free-flowing drinks. Uh, oh. I get to see myself blush in real time thanks to the window. The rest of the bar probably does too. I must look like an idiot. I don't leave though. Sitting at the bar beneath the red and pink party lights is a slim girl with shaggy rainbow dyed hair. She sways on her stool as she laughs with the bartender. The shape of her ass outlined in her tight jeans. I can't buy her a drink, but then again, this is the place for it. Maybe I... Catching a glimpse of me, she turns to the window and gives me a big, bright smile. Images of Marina flash through my head. Images from last night at first, her holding me, me kissing her neck. And then the Valley of Fire, finding all the pieces of her treasure, helping her on the side of the road. But the images that stick out the most are the quiet times. Me driving on the highway while Marina sways back and forth to my music. I back away and take off as fast as I can. Am I that disgusting? Was that all Marina was to me? I slap myself and it barely stings, I do it again. Smacking myself so hard that tears beat in my eyes.
Making them back, I swallow and keep running. One by one, the shops vanish behind me. The sidewalk thins, then disappears. Eventually, it's too dark to even see the ground, and I'm running under unfiltered starlight. When I finally stop, my shoes are heavy with sand. I bolt over and suck in huge, gasping breaths. Forcing myself to look over my shoulder, I realise I'm surrounded by sand dunes and rocky hill ranges. I've left the city far behind me. My footprints prove that. So Aguero cacti are scattered at random, like sorrowful people brooding under the moonlight, their prickly limbs reaching for the sky. I settle my breathing and listen to the sounds of the desert. A gust of wind stirring the dry air, the crackly yelp of a coyote, the whimsical horns and hypnotic guitar strums of faint ska music. Wait. I really am disgusted. Squinting at the horizon, I catch a glimpse of an unmoving light. It's faint and alone, but it's definitely there. Yep. <laughs> there we go. Shimmy with the right click button. <laughs> Pressured by some kind of masochism harbor deep within me, I follow the light. The closer I get, the more I know I should turn back, but my fears are proven to be right as I approach the sound. A black motorhome with stripes just as hideous as the music blasting from it. With every screech of a trumpet, my ears bleed a little more. Every time the guitar plays that stupid, unchanging rhythm, I die inside. But the worst part is something I've never even been subjected to before. Singing. If you can call it that. Not from the song, but from a familiar, brain-piercing wail masking over it. It's awful. Like a dying siren trying to reel in one last sailor. Covering my ears doesn't help. I can only wince in agony as it reaches a high note. Probably killing any wildlife in a general area. Someone needs to stop this. I march to the door, wondering why I'm even going to bother. After everything she's pulled, why should I when I can just go about my life? But then she reaches the chorus. Yeah, that's why. I give the door three solid bangs. Her singing stops. Ha! I knew you numbskulls couldn't live without me! Maria swings the door open. She's flushed, dangling a glass bottle from her hand, don't need to be silenced through a single sniff upon seeing me. You suck at treasure hunting and singing. Go figure. She slams the door in my face. I knock again. It's delayed, but she reopens the door, her head cautiously peeking halfway out. You've taken everything from me. What else could you possibly want? Your soul. Give me the treasure and you got a deal. I'll throw in the slackers too. That's probably not going to happen. She leans out the door. Then he's stumbling over as she peers from side to side. Where's your better half? I look down. How do I even answer that? Mariah growls and limps towards her refrigerator. Ah, <sighs> come in. May as well. No one is waiting for me anymore and yelling at Mariah is as good of a distraction as any. I climb in. My nose is instantly assaulted with the smell of rancid beer. And whiskey. Yeah, and vodka. There might even be traces of a skunk. I decide to breathe through my mouth. The couch and the cot are both empty. 
their lackeys to feed in some rise illusions inside. Where are the other two? Head in the depths of the fridge, Mariah only snorts. Tess wanted to see some stupid walk of fame, so Joe took her. Palm Springs has a walk of fame? According to the squirt. She leans back out of the fridge. How old are you? 19. Why? Close enough. Drink. With a loose throw that I actually have to die for, she tosses me a bottle. The print is in Spanish, carved into the thick glass just above the label. I try pronouncing it, but it comes out sad and depressingly American. You should be worshipping me. That's the good stuff. I'm ecstatic. <laughs> I think she's too far gone to notice the flatness in my voice. Even if she did, I doubt she'd she care. There's something resembling happiness on her face as she cradles half a dozen or so bottles to the couch. Wow. You gonna drink all that? Haven't you had enough? Go die. You stole my equipment and my treasure. I'm not letting you steal my 40 ounces to freedom. <laughs> I shrug and flop down beside her. Mariah drunkenly reaches for the remote, misses it twice, then switches off the music and hurls the remote across the room. Ugh, finally, thank you. I hate Ska. Mariah snarls at me like a toothless piranha. Oh, Corona. <laughs> it's reggae, you uncultured bread! She slumps back down. This guy's okay, too. Uncultured? You were the one who wanted to blow up Shiprock. It was a suggestion. A suggestion! I don't have nearly enough TNT for that. The fact you even have it is what bothers me. Whatever. At least I know what I listen to is good. I like whatever you're into. Oh, I can assure you, what I listen to is better than Ska. Okay! Jazz fusion, new age world music, all better than your circus noise. <laughs> You actually like that hippy dippy crap? <laughs> what books are you did you fall out of? The one that hit your mother when she was pregnant with you, apparently. Ouch. We both click our tongues. Without looking, she pops my cap through the bottle opener. And then hers. We half ass clink with our bottles, we take a swig. The swampy drink curls down my throat, setting my chest on fire. Experience with alcohol is really limited. Gramps didn't keep a lot of booze around, and when he did, it was always mead or wine. He only snuck some out a few times for special things. Gotta say, you're a lot less bearable without the dits holding you on a leash. Shut up! She barely held the flames of the fuse, but that single word is enough to make something inside of me go off. You talk about her that way. She's a kinder, more caring person than you'll ever be. Ryan scratches her nose like my outburst didn't make any sense to her dumb, drunk face. That's not a very high bar. She's not wrong, but she could have at least tried defending herself. I groan and let my birds simmer down. Not before spitting out one more shot of venom. Whatever. It's not like you're any better. You're a mess without the other two keeping you in check. Hey! Don't get any ideas. I'm the one keeping them in check. <laughs> They'd be dead by now if it weren't for me. Sure, Mariah. Pins the bridge of my nose and shake my head with a short laugh. Whether or not I choose to accept that Mariah exists in my reality, she's at least something familiar. Comforting, that isn't the right word for it, but she's someone to talk to. Why are you here anyway? Who even knows? Joel mentioned something about a music orgy thing. Music orgy? You mean the festival? Yeah, th that. <laughs> huh, and you went along with it? 
Hmm, I guess that makes sense. You guys are a thing, right? Building up from the bunch of snorts, my bursts out laughing. <laughs> Me and that slacker wouldn't be a thing if the planets collided, wiped up everything, formed a, a mega planet, and we had to repopulate. That's awfully specific. Why do I get the feeling this exact scenario has been played out in a journal multiple times? Besides, there's more important things to focus on. Or at least... She looks at the drawer again and glares at me. There were. I hide the temptation to laugh in her face and take another gulp. So nothing, huh? You grew up with someone and don't feel the tiniest thing for them? Eh... She takes another swig, but this time just gives the wall a dry, blank stare. If he's still single in ten years, maybe I'll marry him out of pity. <laughs> and she married a treasure in a heartbeat, though. Probably do more than just marry it. What about you and the dips? Aren't you two going to the music orgy together? Her eyes narrow. I'll kill you if that's what you're using my treasure for, by the way. I don't answer. Looking at my now near empty bottle instead. What? You two have a fight? Something like that. I bet it was because of the gold. No honor among thieves, I'll tell you. No, nothing like that. It's... It's hard to explain. Well, I don't really care, but go ahead and moan if you want. It's not any different than what you usually do. Ouch. I look at Mariah. She doesn't seem particularly interested. Invested in... Yeah, invested. <laughs> interested in drowning more beers than anything. She's a maniac. On the floor. <laughs> and has always been and still is abundantly clear. She probably would tear apart the entire southwest if left unattended. Hell, maybe even the entire nation. She's no Joe. No way she could hold up an actual conversation. No way she could accidentally offer some good advice. No way she feels any sympathy. Still, I feel like I can vent to her. Not trust her, not after all the RV chases and games of blackjack, but vent. What are you? <laughs> you an engineer? No, you couldn't fix the RV, that means. You're an imposter, Amber, because you're venting. Oh. Uh. <laughs> she doesn't care, but maybe that's what makes it so appealing. I stay silent and stare at the ceiling, mulling over everything that's happened, searching for the right words. Words I couldn't even give to Marina. I said that I don't care. Not that I'm willing to wait all night so you can steal my time, too. <laughs> Just give me a minute. I'm not really used to... this. Taking a deep breath, I look past Mariah. I'm willing to let her see my shame. A single shred of pride I have left snaps and I let all the weakness come fumbling out. I met Marina a little after my grandpa died. He was... My chest tightens. He was my best friend. My parents didn't want me, but he did. He raised me in that motorhome. He didn't have to, but he took care of me anyway. Raya sips at her beer, listening in silence. No smarmy remarks or deluded rambling. So when I was a kid, I decided I was going to take care of him too. Gratitude, you know? Gratitude for a lot of things. His love, his acceptance, the music. This 
stifle a laugh. God, the music. The goof could spout random trivia about the weirdest music. Pants you've never even heard of. But I loved it. And I loved him. It sounds dumb. A little girl feeling responsible for some full-grown geezer. I didn't care, though. I wanted to prove how much he meant to me. And that's how it worked for the longest time. But then he got sick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in the moment I funnel down the beer and reach for another one Rai shoves her hand in front of me and pops off the cap right as the next cycle of heartbreak starts closing in I whisk at the bottle and force it down soapy foam rushes to the top and spills over as I pull it back Rai only shrugs that festival he was the one who bought those tickets it was going to be our trip. That didn't happen. I failed at my job, but I could at least take the trip for him and try to make up for it. Then I met Marina. A smile slips onto my face. Despite everything, even just saying her name makes me feel cheerful. She was really cute and needed a ride, not to mention oblivious. Maybe it was just instinct, but I wasn't going to let someone so innocent fend for themselves in the desert. I didn't plan on sticking around for long, but when we found the first part of the treasure, I... I don't know. I told myself I was going to stick with her because I had to pay off Gramps' hospital bills and funeral. But the truth is... I stuck with her because it felt like it was a second chance. I could do some good, help and protect someone who really needed it. And the closer I got with Marina, the more I felt like she was my responsibility. But even more than that, when I was with her... My voice cracks, trembling under the weight of my words. I was happy. It was like Gramps was never even gone. Then I remembered he was and I completely shut down. Marina tried comforting me, but I just took advantage of her. When I woke up, I realized that's what I'd been doing this entire time. I was never protecting her. I was just using her to cope with Gramps. So I bought her a ticket home. She yelled and cried. But I did it anyway. I didn't just fail Gramps. I made this trip about me. And I hurt Marina. I don't deserve to be happy. And I don't deserve her. Not a healthy way to feel. Everybody. But you also shouldn't get into relationships to heal yourself, you know? Love yourself, be content with how you are, and then you can love someone else as well. <laughs> Soaking in the silence, I blink away an annoying watery speck in my eye and fight back a few sniffles. You done? <laughs> yeah. Mariah polishes off the rest of her drink and slams it down rattling the other empty bottles on the table. <laughs> I can do that with my water bottle. Smacking her lip, she stretches her neck. Each bone cracks, one after the other, sounding off in a delayed trail. Now I can't do. <laughs> Not even with the water bottle. Then she turns to me and speaks. You're a dumbass. I pause. Excuse me? You heard me! Raya launches herself at me. I wince as her breath streaks out. The smell was bad before, but now it's like she rinsed her mouth with whiskey. God, you piss me off! 
A growl emerges from deep within her throat as she looks me over. Then, as if acting on simple instinctive desire, she delivers a stiff smack to the back of my head. Bop. <laughs> For a split second, everything is a fuzzy white. The infuriating image of a snarling Mariah greets me as my vision fades back, partnered with an even more infuriating throbbing. Ow! What the hell? Why are you hitting me? I just spilled my guts to your jerk ass! Shut up! I'm talking now! <laughs> Raya stumbles off the couch, gripping the table for support. Her face is darkened by several shades of red since I've gotten here. Listen here, thief! Dead is dead is dead! Your dear old granddad ain't crying up in heaven because you decided to do some bride in the back of his RV. words burn right to their fiery core can't believe I ever thought I could count on Mariah where'd you even get off saying I said shut up get over your snooze fest of a sob story you got the girl and you got my treasure but no you can't be happy because of some stupid phony sense of obligation and that's another thing! Her voice gets louder as her words get sloppier, slipping and sliding over each other. I couldn't get a word in, even if I tried. All I can do is listen, stone face as the lashings keep on coming. Who the hell do you think you are? What gives you the right to be some self righteous guardian? You don't look after people because you have to prove yourself, you do it because. stops and scratches her head. I lean in, my breath frozen by anticipation as she tries to decode her own logic. Because you just do, okay? I swear, that annoying complex of yours is going to smother you and everyone else. Ryan grabs another bottle and swings it straight down on the sharp corner of the table. The cat somersaulting through the air. By the time it lands, she's already chugged most of it. I used her. That's right. Obligations, second chances, complexes. None of it means anything. Because it's all said and done. I use Marina to make myself happy. You call that using? Give me a break! I use those slackers all the time. That's using. And you know what? Who cares? That did use you to find the treasure, didn't she? Hell, if anything, you probably don't use her enough. I'd feel like a real jackass if some dumbass were calling me all the time, and all I could do is sit there. People use people all the time. That's what makes them family. <laughs> Bizarre way of saying it, but she speaks the truth. Mariah takes one last swig of her beer, and when a glint of sadness in her eyes stares into the empty bottle. So if you're gonna hate yourself, find a reason that doesn't suck. Her face smirks from red to a sickly green. The bottle falls from her hand and onto the floor as she rocks side to side, like a sailor that's lost their sea legs. Hey, you don't look so good. A quick moment, Mariah's cheeks blow out. And just as quickly she swallows. There. I'm fine. I just need to drink it off. She wobbles back to the couch and collapses next to me. Neither of us speak. Mariah groans, holding her stomach as she feels around for the bottle opener. I look at the pile of empty bottles building up on the table. What happened to not caring? I don't. I just prefer my treasure not being in the filthy hands of an idiot. Did I just get chewed out by Mariah? 
even worse did some of it actually make sense or is it just the booze unable to spare the energy to lean forward she stretches her arm way out for another beer but I catch it just in time and grab a hold of her hand <gasps> uncensored hand holding guys you need to quit you've had way too much Eat me. Careful. <laughs> she slaps my hand away and snags two more beers, shoving one of them into my stomach. You're an idiot, but whether or not you want to keep being one is up to you. I... I don't know. I need to think about it. <laughs> about whether to keep being an idiot? <laughs> Demi. Mariah rolls her eyes. Dumbass. <laughs> Nothing she says burns anymore. Now it only stings with the acidity of truth. Getting over it. Letting Marina in. Really, letting her in. It's just not that easy. It's never been that easy. But if I don't... Putting my hand on my thigh, I squeeze the outline of the cassette. Mariah raises out her beer and grunts. Sighing, I raise up mine and we clank them together. <sighs> Jerk ass. Massaging the drunk away, I nurse my head as it pounds in rhythm with my heartbeat. The table has become a stockpile of empty promises and broken dreams, foundation beneath even emptier bottles. Mariah is still at my side, slumped over and passed out. She might be a super heavyweight, but I decided to stick around and keep an eye on her. Soon... Joe and Tess will be back and they can take care of the rest. I watch the slight movements of her chest as she breathes in and out. Seeing her so quiet is eerie. It's hard to believe there's still a person underneath all that yelling and obsessiveness, but there she is. People use other people all the time. That's what makes them family. Sounds gross and awful, but those words have been echoing inside me since you said them. I use Marina to cope. There's no denying that, but Mariah said Marina used me to find a treasure. If that's true, then why don't I feel used? Why did I always feel genuinely wanted by her? She relied on me. Is that using? That's all I ever wanted her to feel like she could do. Her trust was the most important thing to me. But no matter how much I wanted it, I knew I didn't deserve it. Because I felt like I was betraying Gramps and would just drag her down with me. What about her, though? Marina was furious when I left, but she wanted to understand. She wanted to help. I wanted her to rely on me, but maybe she wanted me to rely on her too. Reaching into my pocket, I pull out the cassette and hold it in the palm of my hand. The sight of the ribbon all torn and tangled doesn't choke me up or ignite a bitter explosion of anger like earlier. All it does is serve as a numbing reminder of all my regrets. Her wording was off, but Mariah was right. I never let myself rely on Marina. From the very start, I always treated her like a kid and never as an equal. <clears throat> no wonder she got us so upset. She wanted to do as much for me as I was doing for her. But I would never let her in long enough for that to happen. 
Of course she wouldn't say no if I made a move. It's the only opportunity she had. If I go back as I am now, things will never get better. I just keep treating Marina like a kid, never letting her in, and she'll just smile and bear it until she explodes like earlier. I know what I have to do, and yet it feels more like a betrayal thing than anything else I've done this far. But if I don't do it, I can never truly hope to do right by Marina. I stagger to my feet. Turning around, I take one last look at Mariah before deciding to take off her bandana and lay her out on her side. In another life, maybe you would be my type. <laughs> Gross. Then I walk to the door, take a breath and step outside. The night sky is deep and clear, embedded with a rich blue draped behind a glow of constellations. This light is all that guides me as I sludge my way through the thickness of the sand, wandering from Mariah's RV with a destination of nowhere. Finally, I've gone far enough, where the haze of the city lights can't be seen, and where the distance in a motorhome can't be gauged. I'm alone. For the first time, I'm truly alone. Free from the treasure. Free from the festival, free from the responsibility, free from even Marina. Sitting down, I sink into the sand and look at the stars. Remember that time in Wyoming when we camped out on the Great Plains? The whole sleeping under the stars thing seemed like the coolest idea ever to little me. You were so excited to teach me about the constellations. It didn't matter that you sucked at astronomy, you just kept mislabeling them. I made sure to read up on them later, by the way. That was the Big Dipper, not Howe's guitar. But that's okay. I still got a kick out of it. Besides, that's not the type of thing I expected to learn from you anyway. What I really remember from that trip was the s'mores. Pretty sure you only liked them burned because you were so old. Really stuck with me though. Can't have s'mores any other way now. I think I may have converted someone else to the burn side too. She has a huge sweet tooth though, so I shouldn't be too surprised. Still, it made me really happy when she said she liked it. stare down and pet like a set, feeling my thumbs over its holes and brown blotches and stains. I think you'd like her a lot. She's a sweetheart, always cheery and nice, even when she really shouldn't. Don't know how she does it, but she can somehow deal with me and my moods. This is her first time ever leaving home, and it shows. I worry about her a lot, kind of like how I worried about you. Kind of like how I still do. A tear drips onto the cassette. Didn't even notice it trail down my cheek or the rest. Maybe I got attached too easily and really did use her. But I don't want to leave. I love her so much. And I want to prove I'm worth loving too. You are, Ember. <laughs> Would you hate me? Would I be letting you down if I decided to be happy instead? I gaze back up at the sky through my blurry vision. The stars don't on a answer back, they just keep twinkling. I lower my head. The cassette feels like a lifeless dead weight in my palm. My breath shakes and the next words slip out in a whimper. I'm sorry. I dig my fingers into the ground, scraping away the sand as sharp grains nudge between my nails. A shallow hole forms, a pile of dirt lying next to it. I can barely stomach looking at the cassette as I lay it down in its grave. I 
glance away as I slide dirt back over the hole. When I look back, a corner of it still sticks out, only partially buried. It's reaching out, grasping for me. <laughs> I cover my eyes and pinch away the tears. <laughs> you and me both, Amber. It's still there. It will always be there, but now I don't need to acknowledge it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Love Ruben didn't make me cry anywhere near as much as this one. <laughs> What's that, like three for three? <laughs> uh, three for six, maybe four for six, I don't know. Drenched in sweat, I gasped for life and hacked the sand out of my mouth. Memories from the night before start flooding back as I choke down the lump in my throat. The desert, the tape, the stars. Marina! Fourth on the list, damn. My head snaps to the sky. The sun is already a quarter of the way done with its cycle. Soon, if it already hasn't, a taxi will pick up Marina and I'll never see her again. All because I couldn't let myself trust her. I slam my fist down, kicking up a pitiful plume of sand. Even if I ran, I'd never be able to make it in time. If only I had the motor home. Wait. Mariah! There's a chance they still might be camped out nearby. Wiping the tears from my eyes, I spring to my feet and sprint in the direction of their motor home even a half buried cassette behind me. Please still be there, please still be there. Sure enough, it's right where it was last night. I run up and pound on the door, looking harder and louder until someone answers. Looking up with wide eyes, Tess opens the door and stares at me. Tess, is Mariah here? Amber? Joe slinks off the couch and joins Tess at the door. Sheesh, you're a wreck. Everything okay? Joe's, Joe's one of the best people in this. There's only one male, really, but he's great. <laughs> Quick, the time! Huh? The time! What time is it? Uh... He looks at the invisible watch on his wrist and switches between all the walls before Tess digs around in her shorts and hands him a chain pocket watch. Ten o'clock, apparently. He turns to Tess. When did you start carrying this round? <laughs> Why the hell is it so freaking loud? <laughs> a bottle comes hurtling towards Joe. He ducks at the last second, letting his shadow across the wall. Oh yeah, she smashed the last one. Fifteen minutes, there's still time! Whoa, slow down a sec. Time for what? I know this is short notice, but I need a ride! A ride? Now? I said shut the hell up! Another bottle comes flying towards him. Now this time Tess hops up and snatches it out of the air. He looks across the room, then back to me. Now's probably not the best time. Sis's hangovers are lethal. <laughs> no! We need to leave now! Do you not remember what I said I'd do with the jumper cables the next time you- Nursing her forehead and lifting up another bottle, Mariah stumps over, only to freeze once she sees me. Mariah, I need a ride. Please, you were right. I made a big mistake, and if I'm not back at her hotel in 15, I'll never see Marina again. The motorhome falls silent. All eyes on Mariah. Her face is blank. 
unreadable compared to all the crazy scales like she usually wears. Finally, she speaks. All right, let her in. I'm really sorry, but you know how she... Wait. For real? <laughs> Mariah closes her eyes and takes a deep, long breath. Before I change my mind... Joe and Tess shoot each other surprised glances, then shrug. Well, what do you know? Miracles actually do happen. The desert heat has thawed her icy heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just shut up and get ready. I hop in. The other two scurry round and batten down the hatches <laughs> like it's a friggin' boat. <laughs> Strapping shut all the cupboards and shelves. Grabbing her bandana, Mariah ties it around her head while I shuffle around and try to spit out a thank you. So, uh, I should probably... We're all set. I'll take the wheel. Jay rushes past us with the keys, but Mariah trips him and snags them from his hand. No way! You drive like an old man! I'll drive! No, I drive like a normal person. You just happen to drive like a maniac. Besides, you're hungover. It'll be fine. Come on. They both dart over to the front seats and the RV rolls to life. Tess, here are the dog. Tess nods and runs to the fridge, grabbing a bottle that looks a lot like the ones from last night, except this one has a picture of a devil on it. I don't know that one. <laughs> And not a okay with a lot of American beer. She tosses it over to her sister, who showcases the same catching talent as her. Now that's what I'm talking about. Slamming a bottle in the cup holder, Mariah sticks her head out the window and backs up the motorhome. Joe shakes his head, placing the devil's brew with a nearby water bottle while she isn't looking. You're going to need to hang on tight, by the way. Huh? Why? Really? You have to ask? My question is immediately answered as I'm flung against the couch. Tess's small frame crashes into me. It doesn't hurt as much if you relax your muscles. <laughs> the RV speeds forward. The license plate wind chime dings in chaotic disunion as the bottles and cans roll across the floor, clanging together whenever they meet. Even a table is seesawing back and forth. I look out the window. Mariah flies onto the road, cutting off an entire lane of curves. <laughs> the RV hits the ground and bounces. I manage to keep my head from bashing a card above me, but Tess lets herself get tossed around, rolling across the floor with the trash. In the most hilarious animation I've seen this far. So where exactly am I going? The hotel downtown. You'd have to be stupid to miss it. Remember who you're talking to here. Hotel? You didn't spend any of my treasure on that, did you? Ryan glares back at me, oblivious to everything on the other side of the windshield. I might have used a nugget to bribe the manager. What? I'll kill you! Save the cat fight for later. There are more important things to focus on right now, like the road. The road will always be there, Joe. My treasure won't. <laughs> treasure or our lives. Okay, everyone here already knows the answer to that one. I attest you the math. The treasure's worth more than any of you. Watch out! A big rig comes speeding towards us, blasting its deafening horn. At the last second, Mariah swerves back into her lane as the truck barrels past us. The motorhome hits a bump and bounces up again. Unprepared, poor Joe's head hits the ceiling, knocking the light from his eyes. So it's going hard enough I can even see his soul drifting away from his body. Sis, I think Joey's dead. This trio is hilarious. About damn time! He was getting annoying! Tess salutes a fallen comrade. 
It's always the sane ones who die first. We zoom past the town's welcoming centre. It's not far at all now. Tess, what time is it? 10.12. I grip my teeth and glare out the window. Please still be there. Downtown comes into view. A strip of familiar stores and restaurants starts forming. Ryan races down the street, ignoring all traffic lights and pedestrians as people leap out of the way and cars break into other lanes. We're almost there! Get ready! A hotel looms up ahead. Through the windshield I can see Marina holding onto a small suitcase as she prayers, prepares to step onto the cab. I leap to the door and swing it open. Wind rushes through my hair, the motorhome is slowing down, but I don't care. The hell are you doing? I launch myself onto the street, tumbling across the burning concrete as the road tears against my skin. Immediately I spring back up and dart towards Marina. Her eye screeches to a halt in the middle of the street, blocking anyone from driving through. The three of them hop out, Joe clutching his head as he stumbles out the door, thankfully alive. Uh, Amber? Before she can get another word, I grab her by the waist and throw my lips against hers. She pulls herself away and glares at me through her puffy red eyes. I plant my hands on her shoulders and steady myself as tears stream down my face. I'm sorry! I'm so sorry! <laughs> Rena freezes then. She slowly softens from a glare to a strain. I catch a lump building in her throat too. I thought you weren't coming back. I know. I know. I was such a bitch. I didn't mean any of it. I love you so much. I just didn't want to hurt you. Uh, what? How could you ever hurt me? I was scared. The tears then stop. The crying gets louder. I was afraid I was using you because I didn't have grips anymore. I lost my family. I always wanted to help you. But I think I might be the one who really needs help. Marina can't hold it back any longer and starts bawling in my arms. Hugging me as tight as she possibly can. <laughs> Dummy, I'm your new family. I don't care if you use me. I love you. I love you too. This time, we both move in for the kiss. Two blubbering idiots trying to prove just how much the other means. I'm not sure if it's her tears I'm tasting or mine, but I can still make out the soft sweetness of her lips regardless. It's funny. This entire time I thought I was a nucleus of it all. That I was the one helping her or using her. But as cheesy as it sounds, I think Marina has always been the one helping me. In the very beginning. Through the kissing, I catch a glimpse of a trio. Joe covering Tess's eyes as he slips from Raya a bill. We manage to compose ourselves enough to pull each other away, but we never let go of the other's hand. Rolling her eyes, Mariah unties her bandana and tosses it to me. You both look disgusting. Here. Again, hilarious. <laughs> Thanks. I wipe away as many of my tears as I can before passing along to Marina. Marina. <coughs> Marina. He blows into it like a trumpet. She sniffs, her nose red and tears still leaking out, and hands the trench cloth back to Mariah, who gives it to Joe. He cringes as he dangles it from his fingers. Hi, guys. Hi. Thanks to you three. I mean it. Especially you, Maria. For a moment, 
Raya lowers her guard and almost smirks. He remembers it, it's just not her style. Whatever. That doesn't make us cool or anything. I still despise you. It's true. <laughs> yeah, she hates your guts. Wouldn't have it any other way. Marina giggles and I bring her in closer. And suddenly I remember something. Oh! I bend over and dig through Marina's suitcase, bringing out a single gold nugget and passing it to Mariah. Figured yours was getting lonely. Mariah stares at her hand, the other two gathering around her. How about that? You ended up getting the treasure after all, Mariah. <laughs> it seems bigger than the one we have. Finally defeated, Mariah looks up and sighs. I guess we can probably plant it off somewhere. She walks back to her motorhome, waving along the other two. Come on, let's go. Well, see you two ladies down the road. God, I hope not. <laughs> Tess looks back and forth, then scurries over to Marina and gives a quick hug around her waist before following the other two. Bye. Aww. And with that, they speed off, leaving a trail of property damage behind them as they beat their loud-ass horn into the distance. Marina and I are left alone, the cab long gone. Between small spurts of laughter, we thumb away each other's tears. She's happy to be together again. <clears throat> hey, let's go pick up the motorhome. Yeah. She sniffs one last time. I'd like that. I'm going to take that as... Yeah. <laughs> happy ending and then next time happily ever after because <laughs> I put down I will be doing this today and tomorrow so yeah <laughs> need to leave something for the next one <sighs> until next time everybody I have been Shimming Shadow and this has been Highway Blossoms a lovely romantic Yearly story. Fleeting bits of comedy. <laughs> so that I laugh and I cry and hopefully you have all, all enjoyed it along with me. Next time, finale. But until then, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>